Hi, in this problem, we are going to look at a slightly tricky integral question and it involves many concepts. So you should pay attention to the solution. Try the question first yourself. And if you don't get it, you can always uh, look at the video solution, right? So the question goes like this, let I is equal to integral from K square plus K plus one to K square plus K plus two of root over x minus k square minus k minus 1 and k square plus k plus 2 minus x dx, right? Where k is any constant, k is any constant. The first part of the question is asking us to find the value of i. The second part of the question is saying, if l is equal to limit of n tends to infinity 1 by n square and inside there is a summation of r going from 0 to n minus 1 r times i right then find the value of find the value of integral minus 1 to 1 of x to the power gif of 16 times i plus x to the power gif of 16 times l dx. Here the symbol, this symbol means gif, greatest integer function, right? Okay, so we cannot do anything about part 2 unless we solve the integral. Right? So this is a nice and tricky integral and you need to know the substitution that is appropriate here. So it is standard, but it is something that you might not be aware of. So learn the trick here, because if you see a problem like this, the substitution that we are going to do is the only way to solve it. Okay. In a reasonable amount of time. So let's look at this integral. You have an integral of root over X minus alpha and beta minus X. Here, alpha and beta are some constants. dx, right? This is my indefinite integral. Whenever you have a situation like this, the substitution that works here is x is equal to alpha cos square theta plus beta sine square theta. And this, this substitution will magically solve your problem. You can even write it as alpha sine square theta plus beta cos square theta. It doesn't matter. But remember the pattern you have under a root, you have two factors which are linear. You have x minus alpha, beta minus x. And if you do this substitution or this substitution, you will be able to solve the integral. Otherwise, it will become a little annoying. Okay. So what I will do is I will not show you the derivation for this. I will show you by working out the particular problem that we have, right? So here our problem is this. Integral was from k square plus k plus 1 to k square plus k plus 2 of root over x minus k square plus k plus 1 and k square plus k plus 2 minus x and whole thing dx, right? So obviously I don't want to keep writing k square plus k plus 1 and k square plus k plus 2 all the time. So I'll call it alpha is k square plus k plus 1. And obviously this is alpha plus 1. So the integral is alpha to alpha plus 1 root over x minus alpha times alpha plus 1 minus x dx, right? And alpha stands for k square plus k plus 1, right? So what is my substitution? The substitution that is supposed to work is x is equal to alpha sine square theta plus the other constant alpha plus 1 into cos square theta, right? So let's see how it will magically solve the problem. So what is dx here? Let's calculate dx. This will be alpha 2 sine theta cos theta plus alpha plus 1 2 sine theta minus cos theta. It should be 2 cos theta and then minus sine theta, but it's the same thing. So whole thing times d theta. So you're getting dx is equal to, notice that this is sine 2 theta. This is also sine 2 theta, but it is negative. So you have alpha sine 2 theta minus alpha plus 1 sine 2 theta. 
So that will become basically minus sine 2 theta d theta. Right? This is going to come out after you simplify this, right? Okay, so let's remember that. And let's also try to find out what is x minus alpha. x minus alpha would be alpha sine square theta plus alpha plus 1 cos square theta minus alpha. So this is alpha plus 1 cos square theta minus alpha 1 minus sine square theta common between this and this. So minus alpha cos square theta. So this is clearly cos square theta, right? So x minus alpha is cos square theta. What is alpha plus 1 minus x? That is going to become alpha plus 1, 1 minus cos square theta minus alpha sine square theta. What am I doing here? Instead of x, I am putting alpha sine square theta and alpha plus 1 cos square theta. So I'll get alpha plus 1 minus alpha plus 1 cos square theta, which is going to become alpha plus 1 sine square theta and minus alpha sine square theta. So what I'm getting finally is alpha plus 1 minus x. Notice that alpha plus 1 sine square theta minus alpha sine square theta will be simply sine square theta, right? So these are my two factors and now the limits also will change. So let's calculate the limits as well. So I will do it on the next screen. So my integral is alpha to alpha plus 1, x minus alpha, alpha plus 1 minus x, dx. So far what I have found is dx is equal to minus sine 2, th 2 theta d theta. And here I have taken x as alpha sine square theta plus alpha plus 1 cos square theta, right? Okay. And I also got x minus alpha after simplifying came out to be cos square theta and alpha plus 1 minus x came out to be sine square theta. Right. So now what I will do is I will also change the limits because everything I'm converting to theta variable. So how do I change the limits? So here, this is my substitution. If X takes the value of alpha, when X is alpha, we can say alpha is equal to alpha sine square theta plus alpha plus one cos square theta. So from here, I will get alpha cos square theta is equal to alpha plus one cos square theta. So clearly cos square theta is equal to zero. So theta is equal to pi by two, right? So this is the condition when x is alpha, theta is pi by two. And when x is alpha plus one, you will get alpha plus one is equal to alpha sine square theta plus alpha plus one cos square theta. So that will make it alpha plus one sine square theta is equal to alpha sine square theta. And that will make it sine square theta is equal to zero, which means theta is equal to zero. So now that I know the upper limit and the lower limit also, I'm ready to do the transformation, right? So I will say when X is alpha, what is theta? Theta is pi by two. When X is alpha plus one, what is theta? Theta is zero. Inside the root, what do I have? Cos square theta and sine square theta. And instead of dx, what do I have? Minus sine two theta d theta, right? So after coming out of the root, this will become sine theta cos theta. So that is half sine two theta multiplied by minus sine two theta d theta. And the whole thing is integrated from pi by two to zero, right? We can take the minus sign and convert it to zero to pi by two, reversing the definite integral. We have half sine square two theta d theta, right? This is going to be the value of my integral, right? Great. So now that can be done very easily. Half sine square two theta can be written as half into one minus cos two theta cos four theta by two. This is going to be sine square two theta, right? And my integral was from zero to pi by two of this thing d theta. So what I'm getting is one by four minus one by four cos four theta. I have to integrate. So it will be theta by four minus one by four and one by four. So one by 16 sine four theta. And this is evaluated from zero to pi by two, right? So when you put pi by two, you will get pi by eight 
minus this part will vanish because it will become sine of 2 pi. When it put 0 anyway, everything will vanish. So finally, our answer is coming i is equal to pi by 8, right? And notice we did not even need to worry about the k and all. We just took it as a variable alpha and automatically the integral worked out when we used the correct substitution, right? So that is the first part of the question. We have gotten the value of i, but we still have a second part of the question left, which was about this limit. So we know i is equal to pi by 8, right? And we have L was defined as limit n tends to infinity and 1 over n square summation r goes from 0 to n minus 1 r times i, right? So first of all, this is limit n tends to infinity 1 over n square summation of r goes from 0 to n minus 1 r times pi by 8, right? This is my expression. And this should remind you, this is definite integral as the limit of a sum. Definite integral as the limit of a sum. So the concept here is if you can express, you can always express any integral as the limit of a sum as long as you have this form. Limit n tends to infinity 1 by n f of r by n. And the limit is over r going from something to something, right? So it should be f of r by n because here what you will do is r by n will become your x, 1 by n will take the place of dx and the limiting values of r by n will give you the upper and lower limits of the integral. So this will become integral of some upper and lower limits f of x dx, right? So the concept here, if you're unclear on, you need to study the definite integrals chapter or watch some of the videos on my channel. I have explained this in lots of videos in the past. So search for definite integral, you will get the idea. You will get the appropriate video. And anyway, when we cover calculus in one of our uh, revision playlists, you will we will discuss it. So don't worry about it. If you already know, there is no issue. If you don't know this, you need to figure out what it is watch some relevant videos and you will get the idea. But for now, what we will do is we'll just fit it into this form. So we have here limit n tends to infinity. We will keep a one by n outside to maintain this form one by n. And we'll take a n inside and we'll write it as r goes from zero to n minus one pi by eight times r by n, right? So this r by n is my function, function of r by n I needed inside, right? Now, this is clearly in the correct form. So it will transform into an integral pi by eight, where r by n will become x, one by n will become my dx. And the integrals lower and upper limits will be the limiting values of r by n as n tends to infinity and r goes from zero to n minus one. So the limiting value will be zero by n, which is tending to zero as n tends to infinity or n minus one by n, which is tending to one. So it is going to be limit zero to one. And this clearly becomes pi by eight into x squared by two, which becomes after putting the limits zero and one becomes pi by 16. So pi by 16 becomes our limiting value L, right? So we have found L, we have also found I, and now we are ready to finish the problem. L is pi by 16, I is pi by eight, and we are asked to find the value of this integral minus one to one, x to the power gif of 16i plus x to the power gif of 16l dx, right? So 16l is pi, 16i is 2 pi, and gif of 16l, pi's gif will be 3, and gif of 16i is 2 pi's gif. 2 pi will be around 6.28, so it will be 6. So we have minus 1 to 1 x cubed plus x6 dx. This can be written as two separate integrals, minus one to one x cubed dx plus minus one to one x bar six dx. And obviously this integral will vanish because it's an odd function. And the limits are minus a to a, odd functions do not have an area because the area gets canceled. And this integral will be twice of zero to one x bar six dx because it's an even function. 
and that will be 2 times x power 7 by 7 evaluated from 0 to 1. So the answer will be 2 by 7. So 2 by 7 is the solution for this second part of the problem and we already did the first part. Okay. So hopefully you have learned something from this video. The idea of the integral was that substitution x is equal to alpha sine square theta plus beta cos square theta. That form always works by that substitution. You need to practice a couple of problems on it and then you will also be able to do it, right? The second part of the problem was about definite integral as a limit of a sum, which is an important concept on which IIT has asked questions several times. So you need to learn that as well. If you don't know, watch some relevant videos on my channel and it should be clear. So that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.